So I think I've said this before, I absolutely adore and love plants. <laughs> and I'm really excited to show, like share this topic with you because it's so meaningful to me. Welcome to my little woodland world. I'm Heather Lynn, and today, my loves, I wanted to share with you how slow living with plants can help you get connected to the magic of the plants themselves. I have narrowed it down to 10 simple ways to build relationships with plants and to understand her magic. This magic is found only in the relationship to her. Well, who is her? The glorious plant before you. Each plant has a spirit and in order to know what I mean, the first step is to reach out to the plant world. Plants have come at the perfect times throughout my life, and in a way, they have saved me. The relationship we formed were mutual and healing. So let's get started with some good ways to get going. Welcome to the 10 simple ways to build relationships with plants to better understand her magic. Number one, visiting a greenhouse. Just taking a slow walk through a local greenhouse, one can already feel the magic in the air. That feeling best described as alive is in fact energetic life. Another way to experience this is to go to the forest. Same magic, different plants. You leave feeling renewed. Just being around plants has an effect and taking it a step further, touch, observe, and attempt to connect with the plants around you that you feel called to. And if you feel so inclined to connect daily, here is number two, purchase a plant. While you're at the greenhouse, buy a cactus or an easy to care for plant. There is no greater way to form a relationship with a plant than to care for her. This leads me to number three, study the plant. Google the plant and take 10 to 15 minutes to read about her and how to care for her. You can even name your plant, get to know your plant through specific care that she needs. You can observe your plant, give her your attention. It is like meditating as you attempt to connect. She will show you her magic over time. Number four, research a plant for health that is both good for your body and a plant that you can make into a tea and order that plant to craft it into a loose leaf tea. Order from a reputable source, either a health food store, or I have left some links for you below for some places you can order from. The plants we eat and the plants we make into medicine have great potential to help us deepen our relationship to the plant realm. In nature, we had and can still have a synonymous relationship with plants. We eat her fruit and unintentionally we spread her seed. When camping or living closely with nature, this is still very possible. This connection to a time when we had a slower way of life. Many of these suggestions will naturally slow down your life and give you the benefits of slow living with plants. To me, this is part of plant magic. Number five, eat leafy greens and make a salad. Get to know how you feel when you eat plants that are nourishing and nutritious. Get to know her real natural flavors and thank her for her blessings. Before we go on, I wanted to invite you to like this video, if you're enjoying it, and leave a comment. Sharing our ideas as a community is really where it's at, so do share how you connect to plants or how you plan to connect to the magic of plants in the future. Even come back to the video later and share your experience with us. And if you would like to join our little woodland community, do click the notification bell and subscribe. The next few months, I will be focusing on slow living with plants and I will share more on slow herbalism. If you have ever wanted to start working with herbs, but just don't know where to begin, stick around because that's exactly what we're getting into next. On to number six, consume media about plants. Read books, watch documentaries, or YouTube videos about plants specific to your interests. Maybe it's wildlife as food or learning about native plants in your area. Perhaps books on spiritual connections with plants or herbal medicine. I have left some book titles in the video links below to get you started. Number seven, draw plants as part of your research or create with plants in some way. 
I want to also say moss gardens are just lovely, and glass terrariums are such a win for most households, especially those with families. Both are tiny worlds of plants with tiny bits of magic flowing everywhere. Number eight, sprout bulbs indoors or outdoors? The best time to sprout bulbs indoors are generally midwinter and in the spring. Outdoor planning is usually done in the fall. Sprouting bulbs indoors during midwinter is such a gift of green, and it can be very healing, especially if it's snowed a ton that winter. The slow process of sprouting is therapeutic. Going with the rhythms of nature helps us embrace slow living. Plants help us get there with grace. Number nine, come into relationship with wild plants. Hi everyone. <laughs> So right now it's a little cold, but it's um, manageable. I'm just outside temporarily because, you know, every so often I'm driving through town. Today is my day to go to the grocery store. I just found this beautiful tree. Sometimes I'm just driving through a parking lot or I'm just driving on the, on the road and I will see something stunning about a tree. It might even be something like interesting or something I haven't seen before. So. I guess this um, suggestion is all about, it's not just go and befriend a tree or um, seek out nature, but be open intuitively to having like a sense of discovery when it comes to plants. So for me, it's like one of the cool things that I've been doing is just like randomly stopping. I use my phone or um, ID books and I just instead of like hiking out into the middle of nowhere I just get to know the trees that are around me or the plants that are around me and for me right now that means I'm in the middle of a parking lot um, but as if you've been around my channel before you know I'm often hiking in the woods so I'm also discovering plants and trees in wildlife in the actual um, Adirondack Mountains and yeah but like right now I'm just wanting to show you an example of just how easy it is to form connection. And I think it's just having that awareness, like not like you're on the lookout, but you're open to looking out so that when you are driving around, something might catch your attention. You might intuitively feel drawn to a particular tree. Like for example, this particular tree, Take the first step and learn about one wild food or one local medicinal plant. Take this slow. Locate the plant, learn about it, harvest it, and use all of the parts as possible, either for food or for medicine. And be sure to use an ID book or an app and be careful but confident. I have linked the app that I use below. Consider also making a journal and taking notes. All your observations collected in one location. I will actually have a video up about this process that I go through when I am in relationship with plants. Um, this video will probably come up in the spring and I will of course link it down below. And finally, our number 10, plant a garden. The ultimate bonding experience of them all is to sprout seeds and plant your own garden. You can plant an indoor garden or one that's outdoors. Going through this whole process with many plants can be a true blessing. If you start small, you will find this process invites you into the magical world of plants effortlessly. The magic truly is in tuning in to the rhythms of nature. This heartbeat of the cycle of growth, when we walk with her, the garden or the forest, we are pulled into the slow living heartbeat of nature herself. If this is not real magic, I just don't know what else is. Well, thanks for coming to join me, Woodland family. And thanks for coming to learn about how slow living with plants can inspire us all. Whatever way you connect to plants, it is connecting to that life-giving energy that bonds us to the plant kingdom. And that energy is that pure, simple joy of being alive. Till next time, plant lovers, come find me again.